Today we're going to talk about how to make your vlogs a little bit more interesting and how to actually make a vlog because there's a lot of people that don't know and it's very hard because it requires a lot of practice. One of the biggest mistakes that I see when people start out is that they explain too much instead of showing the audience what is go about to go down. Say for example that I'm gonna go into this hardware store. What most people would say or start the vlog with is... Today we are going to head to the hardware store because I need to buy a couple of things uh, that I've been thinking on for a while. And that is great if you want to tell the audience what you're about to do before they actually experience what you're about to do. But what I would do is to do something like this. I need a couple of things for the studio. See, by doing it this way you keep the interest of you as the viewer much longer because you don't really explain what you're about to do, why you're purchasing the things that you do. You just go out, do the thing that you're about to do without explaining, but showing. Same kind of technique applies if you want to get some coffee. Show the audience that you're actually getting coffee and then explain why you got the cup of coffee because you're tired. But if you explain that you want to have a cup of coffee before you get the cup of coffee, then you've already removed the element of surprise from your video. Because video is about visual storytelling, not about explaining things. I mean, you can do, of course, like crossover things. We have like a voiceover, stuff like that. But if you want to do just raw vlogs, this is the best way to go. This is also another thing that I see a lot of people do, you know, including too much of going in and out from the car, in and out from the apartment, in and out from the house. Our brain is very good at connecting and piecing together things. So if I were to just cut to the car driving and then be in the studio, you'd understand that I'd been driving my car and then got to the studio. It's also important that you try to capture as much storytelling details as you can. Using different camera angles and different focal lengths is great. And uh, as you just saw, making a couple of quick cuts turns something boring into something interesting because then you have like a fast-paced vlog where something is happening all the time. Music is of course one of the most important factors when it comes to making your videos having the right vibe. We can take the classic example where if you were to remove a score from a feature film, it would probably feel less epic than it was intended to be. And that is why I'm very glad that Artlist is sponsoring this video. And I have been using Artlist for the last two and a half years and they have so many good songs that you can use in your vlogs, in your b-roll sequences, in your short films, whatever you may see fit. And they also have a really good selection of sound effects that you can go through, find the ones that you want, sprinkle that into your videos, and go that extra mile to make your videos feel a lot more engaging. If you haven't signed up for Artlist yet, I highly recommend you to do so because you can never have too much music or sound effects in your arsenal as a creator. It's also very important, in my opinion, that you know how and when to use what camera and why you should use that camera. Because something I've experienced is that if I walk around with this camera when I'm out and about and doing my thing, especially in stores, then someone will say, do you have permission to shoot here? And my answer is usually no. So being able to downscale to the CV1 is something that has helped me a whole lot when it comes to these vlogs because this is kind of like borderline. People don't really know if you're shooting something serious or if you're just using your camera for fun. But some occasions there has been people that are saying like, you know what, you can't use that camera here, I'm sorry. That is where I go for my iPhone because my iPhone is something that people cannot take away from me and they cannot really 
look through my phone because it's a personal device. So usually whenever I'm in a store, in the airport, on an airplane, something similar, the iPhone is where I go. And as far as equipment goes, you don't really need to have a setup like this to be able to vlog because some of my vlogs that you see on this channel is actually made entirely with the CV-1 and my iPhone. And on some occasions, I think I only use the CV-1 because I think it's such a versatile camera. Can you believe that my dad is here cleaning the office? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I just wish he did this every week. Who are you cleaning for? For you, my dear son. Oh, how nice of you. How nice of you. Yes. In pyjama pants. If you don't do it yourself, I will do it. <laughs> Using different lenses when you're vlogging is also a very good way to enhance the storytelling in your videos because when you jump from, for example, 16 to 35, that I did right now, then it gives you a little bit more depth on what it is that you want to say because having a wide field of view is great when you're doing talking heads and when you want to use your hands and all that, but when you want to emphasize something, that is when you go a little bit closer. Same goes if you want to do some storytelling without even talking. Having detailed shots can definitely enhance what you're about to do. And my my favorite lens that I use for a lot of those shots is the 85 millimeter f1.8. Let me show you what I mean. The more you can use different lenses in your vlog, the better your storytelling is going to get. And it's also gonna make it more interesting when a viewer watches your video. And the most time consuming part of making vlogs is actually trying to set up the camera to get a good shot. Something that I personally like to do is to be as much run and gun as I possibly can. For example, I never write down anything that I wanna say in my videos. I always keep it in my head, unless I'm doing a planned video because in that case, I usually use bullet points. But vlogs, in my opinion, are one of those things that should be in the moment kind of things, not planned. Of course, walking up to the camera like this is a little bit planned, but it does give, as I said, more depth into your videos when you have different kind of angles that you use. And these require a little bit of planning. Usually what I do is that I try to find some good lighting and then I just place the camera and share what is on top of my head. One of the things that I've found to work the best is if you share your thoughts. For example, always share why you're thinking the way that you are and talk to the audience with a you because you are the one that are watching, not you guys. <laughs> okay, super annoying sound, but it looks good. Christmas vibe, am I right? When it comes to B-roll sequences, that is something that has been made popular in the last few years of vlogging. And I personally think that they can look very good and they can enhance the story, but most of the time people overuse them as a part of making their videos longer. But for example, when you want to show off your Christmas wonderland that you built in the studio, then you can do a B-roll sequence like this. But it's not really necessary to have those unless it's actually providing some sort of value for the video that you're making. If you can apply all these techniques to your vlogs, then you do have an interesting batch of footage that you have to go through and turn in Okay, if you can, okay. um, I'm just gonna do this here. <laughs> You're probably gonna see this because this is gonna be the vlog. This is when you don't write down any bullet points and then just try to come up with what you're about to say on the top of your head. But anyway, um, the most important thing is of course going to be the editing aspect because without the editing, your story is not gonna be interesting to watch. And therefore, editing your videos is and will always be the most crucial aspect 
to an interesting vlog. You can have the best footage in the entire world, but as long as you don't know how to edit that, it's not gonna be a good video. I really hope that you learned something in this video because this is basically the way that I think when I'm making my vlogs. And uh, if you did, do give the video a thumbs up and <laughs> I'm probably gonna say something that I usually only say on my main channel, but don't forget to subscribe as well because this vlog channel is my creative outlet. So if you like this, subscribe and I will see you tomorrow.